two scriptures and I'll close. Isaiah 43, and verse 18 to 19. God said he wants to do something. And the life of everyone here who dare believe the God of the God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and genuinely believe God in this place, I hear the Lord said, I'm doing something new. Yeah. Believe me. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Isaiah 43 and verse 18. Glory to God. He said, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Verse 19. He said, for behold, I will do what? He said, now you shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a well in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let me help you with this. Keep this 19 here. If you must see a new level of success, stop holding on to the hood. Remember you know the former thing. The reason why many of us are where we are today is that the only thing we are holding on to is past failure. The moment you begin to hold on to past failure, you begin to live in fear. And the moment you begin to live in fear, you will lose three things. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, don't go there. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 said, He said, for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. The moment, you are, the moment you become fearful, you will lose three things. One, you will lose the power of God. Two, you will lose the love of God. Three, you will lose your sound mind. Stop holding on to the past. The past is always a navigation to your success or navigation to your failure. The failures of experience Many years ago, many of us are still very good in relating our failure of many years. We can bring it out and say, I have failed, I have failed, and then that's the only thing that is around you that you are broadcasting. You will never see anything new. You have failed before does not make you a failure until you agree to be one. Nobody fails until you agree to fail. You can make mistakes in your approach of climbing. Fall down, rise again. Fall down, rise again. Fall down, rise again. But do not build a tent or plateau around your past failure. Nobody ever become anything new. God is not even committed to give you something new until you forsake your past. There are dealings around your life right now that is a reflection of your past. I try to improve on the way I talk in every service. I try to improve on my knowledge of scripture in every service. I try to improve on my culture of dressing every year. I know the culture of dressing I had there to my dressing this year. I try to improve on my culture of raising children every year. And I, I do weekly target that I must achieve. I had nine financial commitments this week that passed. I won't tell you the volume. But by the grace of God, I was able to nine. But I was able to do I was able to do five. In my office yesterday, I sat down and I give God the glory. And immediately I added another two. I said, okay, if I can carry out of nine, if I can carry four over to the new week, it's good to add another one. So this week I'm entering now, I already had another two. That's how to measure success. I had nine major commitments, but I was able to meet five. So still remaining four. So I had that to make any six. So this week now, six I enter. If your life is not built around such a system, don't dream success. You are keeping to the past. There is no past failure that I'm thinking about in my life. I move forward. I've lost money before. I've invested wrongly before. But I don't do that anymore. It was wrong investment that made me to read more. How do you do this? 
have been cheated before. But I didn't, I didn't plateau around it. If you must see the new, he said, for behold, I will do a new thing. He said, shall you not know it? He said, now you shall spring forth. It will always, new is always better than the old. But the principle in scripture, if you must see the new, stop building around the old. It's good to keep old friendship, but stop keeping old flames. Because a product of the old flames you kept till now. It's good to keep old friendship, but stop keeping old flames. There are many of my friends, and I can tell you by the, by the Spirit of God, there are many of my friends that we have actually had some few discussions in the past, and their brain is still at that level. I left them at that level. It's not being wicked. It's because you are either made or break in friendship. Friendship either make you or break you. So if you are claiming loyalty to a particular relationship that actually plateau around a level of certain failure, that becomes reflection in your life. So when your brain is not consistent or in alignment with the new things I've discovered, I won't get angry. I keep you at that level. When you talk at that level, I laugh at that level. I keep you there, but I've moved on. If you more think about this, there are numbers of people that were actually in church when we were in Dusi. When we told them we'll move out of this place, there are people who called me aside and told me, where will you get the money? Stop it. If I plateau around their mentality, we won't be here today. And they have left this church. So they will have helped me to fail, and yet they will still leave me. And make me an abject failure. I have, there's no how close you are to me. When I see something new and you come to talk against it, I just keep it at that level. I've moved. And when I'm telling you new things about you and then you are arguing about it, I leave you to it. But I've gone. Because I know it's a principle in scripture. You see, you need to be dynamic in your approach to God. Always recognize what is old to move. And celebrate what is new if you must see something new. I will do new thing. It shall be new businesses. New success. Everything turning new. But the condition is stop holding to past failures. Forget your past. Reach out to the new. Forget your past. Reach out to the new. Forget your past. Reach out to the new. Numbers chapter 16 and verse 23. God does new things to validate that is with you. God is not the God of the hood. God is a God of system that is dynamic. God keep doing new things. Numbers 16 verse 23. And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, continue, we are going to 32. Speak unto the congregation saying, get you up from about the Banabu of Korah, Datan and Abiram. Verse 25. I'm speaking to you now. This is what God asked me to tell you. Better listen now. I'm telling you. And Moses rose up and went on to Datan and Abiram. And the elders of Israel followed him. For some of you want to see the new, better follow now. I'm telling you. Verse 26. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the taint of these wicked men, and touch nothing of the earth, lest ye be consumed in what? If you keep looking to the past, you'll be consumed by the nature of the past. The next verse, verse 27. He says, So then they get up from the Tanabu of Korah, Datan and Abiram, and on every side, and Datan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tent, and their wives and their sons and their little children. Verse 28. This is where my emphasis is. My emphasis for I just read that scripture to give you an idea of what really happened. 
This is where my emphasis is to 32. He said, and Moses said, hereby, you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. I'm not telling you that God wants to do new things of my own mind. I'm telling you on the terms and the condition of God. Stop the hold, God will do the new. That's verse, verse 29. This is where my emphasis is. Verse 29. If these men die, the common death of all men, and if they be visited, after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. If you did not see the new belief in the principle I'm telling you, God did send me. Move further, verse 30. But if the Lord make what? If you are there, shout like a believer. If the Lord make what? Are you following? If the Lord make a new thing, and the heart open her mouth, and swallow them with all their pronounce that word if you are there. Eh? Eh? Upper what? Pronounce one by one. Let me know people who knows English. Okay, but I say appertain. Appertain. Okay. But this is not my own pronunciation. Alright. With all their appertain unto them, and they go down quickly into the pit, then you shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. Verse 31. We'll stop at verse 32. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground cleave asunder, that was under the, verse 32, I'll stop there. And the heart opened her mouth, and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all men that appertain unto Korah, and all their goods. But if the Lord do a new thing, it validates that God is with you. If you come with wicked experience and past failures, you will never go anywhere. But if you believe the principle of God and you follow the prophet who God sent to you, Moses, the Lord will do a new thing to validate that he is with you. If you will not kill your past mentality of failure, you, no matter who lays hand on you, it will still not be well. I used to sleep 10 hours and I pray for success I've not seen. I've failed in this. What do I need to do? You might need to reduce your sleep according to our lesson today. If all your life is just based on enjoyment, can I tell you something? You will raise idiots and vagabonds. Now we did it. Enjoy some bottles and the rest. Right there your children will be smoking. A system that is built on just entertainment and enjoyment does not raise quality legacy. You don't like this, but it's true. I've seen children who are 21, 25, who beat their father of 62. I've gone and recovered a man from police station that his son was beating. I'm honest, I can point out. And when I recovered the man from police station, I went to the house, bring the idiot from me. The boy was shivering. So I'm looking at the boy beating the father. So if you fail now, it's, it's, if you fail now, it's continuous. Your children inherit the failure and you suffer the pain till you die. If they're spelling never, you'll feel it there. So I look at the idiot I raised before I left. You'll be consuming your past if you are not ready to work on yourself to actually assess what is new. Mark chapter 2 and verse 22. Mark, ah, we need to be fast. Mark 2.22. We need to be fast. He 
If you are a Christian, please read. He said, and no man puts what? New wine in what? As the new wine does burst the bottle, and the wine is what? Split, and the bottle will be mad, and new and the new wine must be put in what? How many of you want to see something new? You know your bottle that will actually take what is new? Your mentality. Well, your mentality, look at this. How many of you are staying in the village before you come to Abuja? Do you like this? You stay in the village. You see that when you came into Abuja, your mentality changed. Your dressing began to change. Is that so? The way they used to do in village, you know, in the village, when you have small age, you're already brother, you're already auntie. Is that not so? But in this place, you see one young boy who just, just called you and they say, David. Someone understand what I'm saying? There's this mentality of you claim me and your hair is functional when you're in your village. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when you come to a city like this, nobody look at you. <laughs> they deal with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, there is a mentality that is obtainable in the village. That is consistent with what is happening there. But there's a new mentality that is, that is obtainable in Abuja. That is consistent with our reality right there. Let me say this. If you're in the village, when you're already 40, you're already looking at you as one elderly brother. Is that so? There are many 45 year old here who are even 50, still wearing jeans in the community and they are not even married. And when you, if you see the way they will bab their hair, that there will be nothing remaining, so that we will not see the white hair. Some of them even have half plots, so they need to be babbing the half plot so that nothing will show, so that they will not know they are elderly people. Are we following? No, let me face these people. Are we following? Are we following? <laughs> so that they will know, but nevertheless, nevertheless, the mentality obtainable in the village actually shows you, who you your reflection, and that is consistent with your life. The mentality obtainable here is quite different. Better results is better, is better placement. But in village, you can see the value systems are still working. So if everything around your life is not really doing well, eh, before you start attacking the devil, check your mentality. You are as good as your mentality. Nothing new will ever happen to hold mentality. Nothing new will ever happen. You want to see new success, your mentality has to change. The way you are dressed now reflects your mentality. How many of you agree with me? Huh? You first think it before you wait. Yes or yes? And the way you wear the clothes, there's a way you are feeling. Yes or yes? Is your mind telling you how you are feeling? You don't understand. If I wear suits, there's a way I will look. And in, is that look I will not register? You know, some of you go and look at mirror in the morning. Is that look you will not register in your head? That's why you will not be conscious of how you'll be walking. Because of the way you, is that not so? It's your mentality that actually defines everything around your life. You want to see the new? Why do you actually imagine a style or you look at a style? And yet, so Taylor is still showing it. But in your mind, you already know how the thing will be in your body. You already planned that this one is for the birthday party. And now you will look. Maybe it's the one that opened half of the half of the bonnet. Thank you. I like that supply. You understand? The one that already opened half of the bonnet. And then the boot is not properly closed. And that's the one you've downloaded on the internet. That's that the way you want to wear to the birthday. In your mind, you're already thinking, pepper them in this birthday. Is that so? Huh? What is the difference between a village person and a city person? Mentality. Mentality. What is the difference between poor person and rich person? Mentality. You are keeping up to the hold. You'll be consistently in bondage. That's what the scripture said. He said they were consumed in their sin. So you'll be consistently consumed and the past will bury yourself. Reach out to the new. Somebody say reach out to the new. Psalm 100 and verse 1. I want to close now. There are two things that guarantee the new. Psalm 100 and verse 1. There are three things, sorry, that guarantee the new. One is 
Forget your past. Somebody say, forget your past. Somebody say, forget your past. Second thing that guarantees the new is reach out to the new. Reach out what? Reach out. There are relationships that you need to activate. There are relationships you need to keep quiet. Let them still be there. You don't throw away friendship, but you, you can place friendship. It's not the crime. It's not the crime to place friendship. There are pastor friends that I have, and God is my witness, they are never close to me. They are just, when we see, oh, God bless you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what we do. They don't know anything about me. Not anything valuable I've heard from my heart. How, when they call me, they say, glory to God. Oh, God is doing this. One pastor came here one day and was rolling on the floor. How, he said, is this the little you are doing that you are not even telling us? So in my mind, I'm grateful to God, but this is not where I'm going. The thing has, you understand what I'm saying? I've already thinking above this one. I'm grateful to God where we are. And there was one day we came here with this on a few things, and Laddie came here and said, wow, this thing is fast. This is this. I'm just thankful to God. But in my mind, I've moved. Because I know if you must keep seeing the new, you must not be sitting with the old. We are grateful for all that God is doing, but I tell no, 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 there's more, there's more. If I had some money, it would have been faster, already. But the fact I had to go through the process so that I will not miss in future, I'm ready to pay the price. I don't have any uncle I can call on phone, help me. I don't have sister I can sit, disturb you and say, help me. If it's just to keep believing God, then as you keep digging, until I can believe, until my car. You know, my capacity is a few things I'm saying now. When my capacity becomes bigger than this, you say, ah, Pastor, it's a lie. There's something I'm doing, and I'm telling you. Forget the past. Reach out to the new. You want to keep seeing new things in your life? Forget the past. Number two, reach out to the new. Let me show you number three. Number three is have an attitude of attitude. Have an attitude of thanksgiving. Have an attitude of what? Anyone that must keep seeing the new must learn to give God because thanksgiving is always an application for more. This is what they said. They said thanksgiving is an appreciation to God and an application for what? For more. So if you want to keep seeing the new, you must learn to thank God for where you are. Why your, why your senses are not complacent to the hold. You are reaching out to the new. He said, make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Verse 2. Verse 2. He said, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Verse 3. He said, know ye that the Lord is God. He is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. He said, be thankful unto him and what? Bless his holy name. He said, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with what? Praise. And you know in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. And the presence of God is actually the new. So when you come with thanksgiving and into his court, he said, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Look at verse 5, which is the last verse there. He said, for the Lord is good and his mercy is what? And his truth, what? Endures to what? So that means if you keep giving him thanks in all generations, you keep seeing him manifesting the name. People of God, I beg you with the mercies of God, forget the past, reach out to the new, but maintain an attitude of thanksgiving. Let me say this. When you are, when you are proud, seeing something new, it means you are fake with God before you are using God. Let God, I'm standing on the altar of the Most High God. I've not seen much in my life. But the little I've seen, if some of you see it, it will look like a breakthrough. Eh? There is nothing God has ever given me that has changed my position about coming to church. That has changed my, if what you have becomes the reason why you are not consistent with God again, I stand by the God of this altar and I tell you to the truth, it will not last. When your commitment didn't do because of the success, it will not last. Nothing cures pride like thanksgiving. 
I was still discussing this with mama last night. We were sitting down around 11 in the night. We were talking and evaluating some few things. And I said, this guy might not succeed. We were watching a particular... Uh, I, I was eating, so they were watching one particular one thing. So I said, this guy might not succeed. I said, you know why? He said, I saw it too. But when I discovered that he was actually on the altar of the devil, the guy succeeded. Because what they were actually recruiting them for is for the devil to start using them. The moment you get to a level where you think you are all sufficient, you are all buoyant, you can act. I've seen people struggle because they choose not to listen to right counsel. Because they think they can do it to themselves. Then you keep quiet and watch. Suffer first, let's see. It's not wickedness, it's your stupidity. Because what you refuse to acknowledge should not be forced on you. You can abuse it. This is $1,000. Okay, would you take? He said, no, my friend. It's easy for her to say so. Is that so? Imagine she has not eaten for three days. And she has borrowed money from Lakbo. And they have carried some of her goods. You understand what I'm saying? She was jumping up and down. And now came to me and said, take $1,000. She will roll on the floor. You don't understand? She will roll and scatter the chair in Thanksgiving. Is that so? Anyone that is not in need, that has not acknowledged help, should be given help. Because they will always destroy it. Anything that makes you feel you are self-sufficient, you have not got to the realm where you can do things on your own, not acknowledging the input of God and the system God has put in place. God is my witness to not last. And this is not an attack on anyone. I've been preaching since. This is the truth. I've seen people who felt, okay, I can do this thing, I can go around and uh, and I was just looking. One of our person had one problem. It's an earth challenge. And the person seems to be close to me. So he's been saying it. He's been saying, I will do this, I will do that. I was looking at him. He didn't tell me, Pastor, pray. So me too, I asked to reserve my prayer. Is that so? Huh? Eh, he didn't tell Pastor, pray. So me too, I kept my prayer. It's not being wicked. One day, now say, ah. One person now visited him. He said, ah, well, Pastor is here. They tell him. Ah, he said, Pastor is my person. We are together always. <laughs> he said, no. He said, tell him. So the man looked at me and said, Pastor, I said, in the name of Jesus. And the problem went. And the person has suffered for long. There is no issues you are going through that God has not put the right people beside you. If you stay longer in issues, it's because you are not acknowledging your source of help. If you don't acknowledge Jesus, he won't come into your life. You say, I stay at the entrance of your heart and I knock. God comes into your life with your permission. So God even intervenes in your issue with your permission. So if you choose not to, then God leaves you. It's a system of God. Okay, how many of you genuinely apply the things I teach here? How many? Very few. And I won't force you to. My own is to teach. Your own is to apply so that you profit. I've advised people this is not the way to go. He said, no, that's how I want to do my thing. Okay, do it. Let's watch. You have done it. Alpha. Nothing cures pride and self-sufficiency that erode God from your equation like thanksgiving. Anyone genuinely grateful, there is nothing God has blessed me with. One day I led a thanksgiving praise here for three days. And I still have the prayer still now. Six prayer points that I wrote for that thanksgiving. Many of you were here in this church by October last year. You know what I'm talking about. There was no service. I was the one who organized the service. I didn't call anybody to come. Three days of thanksgiving. And what led to it? There's a particular brother who almost lost his life on many things and the rest of that. And the next testimony he shared is that I'll be traveling to so and so with my brother, this and this and then. All the money came and then fully paid for. 
When I gave Mama the testimony to read, she was happy. I knelt down myself too. Right in the office. We came here and we, we declared thanksgiving. And let me tell you, I can still bring out, I don't bring my phones to church. Now, I can go and tell someone to bring my phone right now. I can read the prayer line that I wrote. I said, Father, thank you for the cheers of this church. Thank you for the drum. How many of you were in that service? All right. He said, thank you for the drum. Thank you for the fans. Thank you for every member of this church. Thank you for every family. I was mentioning the name of every member of this church one by one. One by one. All the ones I could remember. And the one I cannot remember, I tied them to their family. Oh, Sister Faith and family. I was mentioning the name of everybody one by one. This is all the blessing you have ever given us. Thank you for our door, our window, our this, our that. If you're in that service, I look foolish. Huh? But I'm not foolish. But we don't in one of the church that I know has the highest maintenance value is this church. We don't repeat as much. We do more. You know why? God preserves the ones we have. So it's easier to keep doing more with the little resources we have. Oh, thank you for the speaker. Thank you for the microphones. Thank you for our instrument. Thank you for our staffs. Thank you for this. Everything. I was mentioning one by one. Oh, it will surprise you. I say thank you for my bed in the house. Your bed can work against you. I didn't have it in mind that I'm the one that bought the bed myself. It's my salary. I know, sir. There's no money anyone ever give me that I don't say, Father, thank you for this. I won't lack that way because it will never bring you to a realm of sufficiency. It will bring you to a realm of acknowledgement that whatever you have is actually a receivement from God. Let me tell you this. The day you get to a realm of self-acclaimed success that took away thanksgiving from your lips, it will flash a while, but it will not last. I'm privileged to have friends of 80 years old, 70 years old, 60 years old. I'm privileged to have people I talk to in at least from, think about from 50 up to 80. And I've seen few experiences, and I'm honest. And I see where they miss it in their area of life. The day of self-sufficiency will make you last. Now, your salary is now one million. That's the only reason why you compromise church. Hush, 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 hush. If God gives more and you do more, God will not be tired of giving. This, this church don't pay me salary. And ask them if I take from their money. The records are there. By the privilege of God, we are looking for what to give, not what to steal. And God is faithful. God is faithful. What some of you will see as breakthrough is what God is. It's God God is playing with us that we can do little, little. He is faithful. Should we, should we give God thanks? Okay. Rise to your feet. How many of you want, want to truly sustain your success? How many of you? How many of, how many of you want to keep seeing new success, new things? How many of you? Forget the hold, reach out to the new, and maintain the attitude of thanksgiving. Maintain what? Where you are working, which day have you given thanks for that place where you are working? Thank you for this shop. How many times have you doing? Your salary comes from there. If the thing destroys, you might go and look for another job truly. But don't don't work in a place where you are planning that the thing should destroy. Don't do that. Your own too will never stand. Your shop where you are working, Father, thank you for this shop. Thank you. That's how you become a stakeholder. Thank you. Oh, Father, thank you for my job. Thank you. Father, thank you for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know why? Thanksgiving, commit God to your situation and keep the devil off from your situation. Because anything you give God thanks for, God will preserve. Thank you. Because I know I cannot sustain my wife. It's not in my wisdom. I have issues, I know. I'm not a normal person, I know. I'm not normal. 
In the night, most times I don't sleep. And I will have read sometimes before I come home. So the level to which I'll be talking sometimes, she may not be operating at that level. So I know I'm no normal. How does she go and pray? You'll have been fooled with the anointing. She will come home, she's been cooking, she's been jumping up and down. And what she wants to gist is how she's been cooking. You are just coming from one reality from heaven. So I have to learn to curb the anointing so that people will not be falling in my house. That's how I have to learn it. I learned that from Pastor Yadi Boy. So I have to learn how to curb the anointing so that you will not be scattered in things. When it's time to switch it on, you can switch. So if I want to go by logics to maintain my wife is far, she la pa can go. But in the attitude of thanksgiving, Father, thank you. Thank you. I thank God for my family. Sometimes God will tell me this is what you are doing wrong. So I will not come, I will come and do it. He will tell me, thank you, sir. In our minds, you think it's me. It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> it's that God spoke to me. So somehow, when I come home, sometimes I, I behave like a good father. She didn't know that it's actually that God spoke to me. I will say, you are just wonderful. In my mind, I will laugh. <laughs> say, I wish you know. <laughs> the song, no, man, no woman has capacity to be good. You want your success sustained. You want to always see the new. Beloved, learn to give thanks. Learn to what? Maintain an attitude of thanksgiving. Maintain. And do not just maintain an attitude of thanksgiving to God. Maintain attitude of thanksgiving to the people God used for you. Because men in the equation of God can stop the plan of God for you. You don't understand? Men in the... Ah, how many water have I drank from your shop? And I'll say thank you very well. You say it's nothing. I'm wise enough to still say thank you. You know why? Because the day I didn't have money to come and drink, you will not question me. So I say, I'm drinking today. I will even buy things. To say, I, will, I will even say thank you. And it's for selling for me. Is that so? So that the day I did not have money, I said, okay, I want one carton of Indomie, one carton of this. You will not ask me, Pastor, bring money. No, she will give it. Because the one I even buy with money, I said thank you. When you don't acknowledge the source to which God passed through to bless you, God is my witness. They can stop the flow. Everything you are praying for is on somebody's table. Huh? It's not man worship. It is scriptural. We did something for someone sometimes ago, and the person did thank you that the thing moved me. The thing moved me. I've seen people tell me thank you and move me to go and pray hours. That if I can sustain this kind of an anointing, these people will not have this kind of a problem. Any church that does not even appreciate their pastor, God is my witness, they won't see miracles. What is a system? It's a system. Good in church gossip at the back. It doesn't work. You are playing with this thing. Attitude of things. Oh, Sister Faye, thank you for all you do. I've done I've seen it before. There are few of you have sent tests to before. I say thank you for all that you do. All that you are doing, thank you. You are just amazing. And I'm not faking it. I understand the law from scriptures. I know God will reward you for what you are doing, but nevertheless, I'll still say thank you. I know God will reward you for all that you are doing, but in my eye, I'll still say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because the day God moved your heart to go and give me like five apple, I, I'm, already, I'm already angry at me. You can shut down your mind and I'll be lying down at home crying, oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God, supply my needs. And God already told that, go and give Pastor five apple. He said, no, no, no. The way Pastor greeted me yesterday, I did not like. As a matter of fact, the day I brought one, he said that one was not really good. Is it five? I will not take there. Ingratitude shut down your doors. Ingratitude frustrates your success. 
In gratitude, frustrate new things. In gratitude, frustrate new things. Let me tell you what you will not believe. One act of ingratitude makes a generation to suffer. Should I show you from scriptures? Should I show you? There's no time. Say it with me. Say one act of ingratitude makes a generation to suffer. If you don't want me to open the Bible, let me show you. The day you help one boy and then he mismanaged it, eh? the next boy you want to help, you apply plenty of caution. Is that so? And that becomes a system. Is that so? One ingratitude makes a whole generation suffer. But this time I gave you this rule. Let me give you, right? For example, see, see what pastor give me. See. He said, the shoes, the thing look like, oh God, this is not the one wear with my village. But you didn't buy it. I gave you. It takes me enough effort to be able to give you. Thank you didn't come from you. Is that so? Did you now have like 100 shoes to now give? In my mind, I'm wondering. The last person I gave was not really grateful. And I would not want to offend others. Is that not so? Is that not so? What people you have given your clothes to that are not grateful? Sometimes you have heap of clothes at home. You are afraid on who you, you are even afraid on who to give so that you don't offend somebody. Is that so? Ingratitude shut down our doors. Nothing shut down success, shut down the new like ingratitude. Believe me as I tell you. And one act of ingratitude I can show you from scriptures. Eh? Closed door of the generation. Jeremiah chapter 32. 30 and verse 19. He said, Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply. I will multiply them, they will not be small. I will glorify them, they will not be few. You know the meaning of that? So if they are not attitude, if they don't maintain attitude of thanksgiving, their multiplication will stop, and their glorification will stop. One act of ingratitude can imprison the destiny of a generation. One act of ingratitude can imprison the destiny of a generation. One act of ingratitude can imprison the destiny of a generation. Many of us are not successful because our parents were not, were not grateful. The people God used for them, they shut it down. They took advantage and they rolled on it. And now we are here praying. Many of, the, many of us are still doing are still doing same. I know a few things that God sacrificed, that, that God, there are many sacrifices that God did for my parents. I know those sources. I didn't put them off. I know a few of the cars that my dad ride, that I rode on, sorry, those days when he was alive, that came from one person to one person. I still owe that family in esteem to now. When they see me so that they won't use me as negative story, I greet them well. I might not be able to pay back, but my gratitude, I know stories, and I know the history of this family. I know our doors will never be closed like that. One act of ingratitude can shut down the destiny of a new generation. Just one. I bought this clothes for Sister Fitz. For example. And in her mind, it's the only Ankara. <laughs> See this guy. It's the only Ankara that you can buy. How bad? Even our parents, when you are not grateful, you shut it down. They are not careful on how to help you. Many of us will never take success, not because the devil is against us. It's simply because we are never grateful. We feel we are too sufficient. Put your two hands. Say thank you, Jesus. Whatever blessing you know God has meant to you, just wave your hands and give God thanks. For provision and protection. For provision, for protection. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. We have a hand and say thank you, Jesus. We are going to dance for just six minutes, five minutes. We are going to dance for five minutes in Thanksgiving. Say thank you, Jesus. For my life, thank you. For the car, thank you. I do that. For my wife, thank you. For my children, thank you. For every one member of this assembly, thank you. Thank you. For the fans, the cheers, thank you. For all the children, thank you. For every family here, thank you. For all that you are doing, thank you. Thank you. 
Say, oh, 